So, you like Chucky? You want seven other horror movies turned series to watch? Let's talk about it, and let me explain. Now, obviously, nothing can replace the Chucky-sized hole in our hearts, although I feel you'll like these. You, the viewer. I mean, I'll like them, myself. Basically, I'll list them off, give you some details, and you can decide for yourself. Let's start with number one, Crystal Lake. Now, Crystal Lake is the Friday the 13th prequel series, as you can guess from the title, Crystal Lake, where the main series takes place, besides, obviously, New York, Space, and a ton of other places. Now, in an article, it's described kind of, let me read it here, Peacock had given the project a straight-to-series order in 2022, with Crystal Lake being described as an expanded prequel to the original Friday the 13th franchise featuring both Jason Voorhees and his mother, Pamela Voorhees. Original Friday the 13th final girl, I'm sorry with names, so I'll just leave the name on the screen, I don't know how to pronounce it, had even signed for a recurring role in the Plan A24 television series. So A24 is involved too, along with Peacock, so it'll likely be on Peacock, which is awesome. Similar to Chucky as well. So could we see some crossovers with Chucky? Maybe? Now there was some a bit of not necessarily drama, but a bit of news breakage or a breaking news segment or piece of news with Crystal Lake that I want to read off here and just go over a little bit. It says, we learned earlier this week that Hannibal creator Brian Fuller, who was involved with Crystal Lake a while back, is no longer the showrunner of A24 and Peacock's Friday the 13th TV series Crystal Lake with, the, with A24, choosing to go a different way with the material. What does that mean? It means A24 is still planning on bringing the Friday the 13th series to life, but the overall vision will likely change. Kevin Williamson, who was obviously famously, or not even it was, is famously behind it, Scream and Sick, has been on board to write an episode of the Crystal Lake series, and Williamson took to Twitter today to tease some of those original plans. And obviously, as it says today, this was a little bit a back ago and everything, I was kind of reading off the details. Williamson writes, Bum and hard, so sorry, I won't be a part of what would have been an epic Brian Fuller show. Your pilot was so beautifully realized, a gorgeous portrait of a mother unraveling in her grief, obviously Pamela Voorhees of, you know, Jason's death, not to mention bloody horrific. He adds, I was so looking forward to our hour-long chase episode, which is just insane to think about because it's like, obviously, Pamela Voorhees goes after different camp counselors in Friday 13th Part 1, so maybe she goes after the original ones in this Crystal Lake series, but obviously, we won't know because obviously, this is now scrapped, unfortunately. <laughs> but damn, that would have been that would have been awesome, and it even is added in one of the, like another tweet by somebody that says, I have read the first two episodes. Brian Fuller's Crystal Lake was well on its way to becoming in another Hannibal level reinvention that was so time that was simultaneously beautiful, sad, poetic, funny, which is pretty cool because obviously Friday 13 has some awesome comedy in it and horrifying. I mourn its passing, although obviously it's not past, it's still happening. It's just Brian Fuller's no longer the showrunner and Kevin Williamson is likely no longer writing. Now it's super unfortunate, but it's still coming, so I'm still curious to see the vision that comes from Crystal Lake. So number two is Welcome to Derry, which is the It Chapter 1 and It Chapter 2 prequel series. A lot of prequels here, which I'm actually pretty down for. Now in a bit, it reads, A familiar face is coming back to terrorize the children of Derry, Maine. Bill Skarsgård is set it to star in and executive produce the Max It prequel TV series, because it, it's coming to, you know, Max or HBO Max, everyone, however you want to describe it. Welcome to Derry working title. He will be reprising the role or title role as it slash Pennywise, the dancing clown or Pennywise from the hit 2017 new line cinema movie It and its sequel, It Chapter 2. A lot of it there. On the Warner Bros. television produced series, Skarsgård is reuniting with other, basically he'll be reuniting with Barbara and Andy Muschietti who'll be directing four episodes of the nine episode series which is fucking awesome to hear because obviously they kicked ass with It Chapter 1 and It Chapter 2 and to see them all reuniting for at least four episodes is awesome. And obviously, I'm pretty sure Andy and Barbara are, you know, helping out in some way with the other episodes, which is super cool to fucking hear. And this is another series that I'm just so excited for. It's because I was so on board even before Bill Skarsgård was announced to be returning. But now that he is confirmed to be returning as Pennywise for this, like, you know, Welcome to Dairy. I'm even more on board and even more excited. Fuck yeah. Now, coming in at number three is Creep. Now, I have not yet seen Creep, but I definitely plan to. Don't kill me. It says, Creep is coming back or creeping back. Duplass Brothers Productions has completed filming the Creep Tapes, a TV series based on the Netflix films Creep 2014 and Creep 2 2017. The project was independently produced without a distributor attached to it, C.A. 
AAA is now handling world sales, which I'm not which I'm not 100 percent sure what that means yet. Per the official description, the series is based on a collection of videotapes in the secret vault of the world's deadliest and most socially uncomfortable serial killer who hires his victims to film him for the film him for the day under false pretenses. Each episode exposes a new victim from the one of the fabled creep tapes. Now that sounds pretty fucking creepy. I definitely have to check out the films and anything to figure out what the thing is with those tapes. But you know, if you've seen it, what are you know, actually don't spoil it. Although I am excited to check it out and I definitely will be checking it out. Let me know if you'll be checking it out. You know, creep. Now, number four is a bit of a classic, you know, the start of the like, you know, term or one of the starters of the term torture porn back in the early 2000s, which is Hostel. Hostel is coming to television, and here's a big fucking bombshell that I did not expect. Paul Giamatti has closed a deal to star in a Hostel TV series, fucking Paul Giamatti, with the franchises Eli Roth, Chris Briggs, and Mike Fleece, and that's how you say his name, all returning to the project from a from fifth season, the studio behind Apple TV's Severance, which that's another show that a lot of people love. I think it looks pretty good, so that's really cool. The Hostel show, which is currently in development and does not yet have a platform attached, which is, I thought, a, you know, Apple TV would be it, but, you know, maybe it still could be, but we don't know as of yet, which is currently in development and does not have a platform attached, is described as being a modern adaption in an elevated thriller that's also a reinvention of the horror franchise that launched in 2006, as I said, early 2000s, and spawned two sequels. Giamatti will star in a key role with character details under wraps. The cast brings the Oscar-nominated star of The Holdovers into Roth's orbit since the duo first met on production of the first Hostel film. Eli Roth, and this is a quote I think from Paul Giamatti, Eli was shooting Hostel in Prague and I was shooting The Illusionist or Illusionist and that's how you say it and I met him. We talked about me killing somebody in that movie but it never panned out which come on man, Paul Giamatti could have fucking killed someone in the original Hostel but we didn't get it but it's fine because you know he's going to be in the Hostel TV series. Should the Hostel TV series move forward it would mark Giamatti's latest TV foray or something for a following his seven season run on the Showtime on Showtime's Billions, which was a show I fucking loved and he was awesome. And so I highly recommend checking it out. It's not horror, but it's still pretty good. And I highly recommend it. It does have its down seasons, but I'm, I'm not reviewing it right now, but it's a pretty good show. Go check it out. And it is kind of interesting how it said, should the Hostel series move forward? So is it not confirmed? But it just did say a deal was signed. So we'll see. Who knows? Now, in number five is a big one. Halloween. Back in October of last year, again, I'm not sure when this was since obviously I'm like going over, going over article details that are from like, you know, random timelines. Back in October of last year, it was announced that after a heated bidding war with genre titans, A24, Miramax, and some uh, international films has had secured the TV rights to the Halloween franchise. And today, Miramax's head of worldwide television, Mark Helwig, brings us some intriguing updates speaking with Deadline. Helwig, I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce his name, reveals that the Halloween television series will be taking things back to the start, spinning off of John Carpenter's 1978 original rather than David Gordon Green and Blumhouse's recent reboot trilogy. And this is him, I'm assuming, speaking in the next quote. The foundation of the original film, the John Carpenter movie, the characters of that film, and perhaps a group of characters that we haven't really focused on that much in recent versions or even in a number of them, it's a creative reset completely, talking about the new series, and going back to the original film as opposed to spinning out of any more recent film adaptions, likely speaking about the David Gordon Green and other movies more recent. Miramax and something co-owning the Halloween rights also means that this television series could spawn an entire new universe of Halloween stories and characters. Producers and CEO of Transcast something, Malik Akkad has worked on Halloween, The Curse of Michael Myers, Halloween H2O 20 years later, Halloween Resurrection, Halloween 2007, Halloween 2 2009. So hopefully is a bunch of ideas up his sleeve. In this series, is already a pretty cool start, the TV series. It's a cool start. So, number six is a pretty cool one, and it's from a TV, or not a TV series, but a franchise, a movie series that I really fucking enjoy and find absolutely terrifying. Besides the most recent entry, which I have not yet seen yet, Conjuring 3, The Devil Made Me Do It, and that kind of reveals it, The Conjuring. The horror of The Conjuring is getting the TV treatment. HBO Max, now labeled Max or titled Max, is developing a TV series based on New Line Cinema's The Conjuring Universe. The news was announced on Wednesday, yet again, probably a while back, exclusively 
specifically during Warner Bros. Discovery's unveiling of the Mac streaming service on the Warner Bros. or on the Warner Bros. lot in Los Angeles. According to Warner Bros., the Conjuring television series will continue the, sto the story established in the feature film's producer, Peter Saffron, is attached to executive producer of the series via the Saffron Company banner. James Wan, who also produced and directed several films within the franchise and then talks to also executive produce Wan's Atomic Monsters Productions, is backing the product alongside Warner Bros. Television. So it's pretty cool to hear James Wan may be involved only as producer, unfortunately, not director, although maybe that'll be announced somewhere down the line. Now, last but not least, Alien. Now, basically, and the thing that I, you know, some of more of the important details I picked out of little articles and like, you know, post, it says it's not Ripley's story. Hawkley revealed to Vanity Fair in 2021. Sigourney Weaver's character, Ellen Ripley, is still seen as a mainstay of the franchise and is rightfully so. But Hawkley's story is branching out. His TV alien, his alien TV series is going where no alien story has gone before Earth. That is, unless you're counting Alien versus Predator and we're not. Okay, that's pretty ballsy the alien stories are always trapped he continued trapped in a prison trapped in a spaceship i thought it would be interesting to open it up a little bit so that the stakes of what happens if you can't contain it are more immediate instead of placing the conflict on the uss something i think the spaceship from alien holly is pivoting the story focus to the competing corporations looking to maximize an artificial intelligence and the technology may prolong human existence or eliminate it which is likely referring to the alien but it is something that definitely does intrigue me of going to earth you know it could be a bit of like you know a quiet place day zero or day one whatever that is which i'm very interested to check out as well so maybe it'll give some of those vibes now those are all the series i want to talk about and all i want to talk about in the video what are your thoughts which series are you most excited to check out which tv series are you most excited about is it crystal lake the friday the 13th prequel series is it welcome to dairy the it prequel series is it creep hostile hollow Halloween, Conjuring, Alien, which one has you more excited? And also, what are your theories on all of these series? Because there's a lot to really dive into when it comes to each individual series itself. Tons of theories, tons of things to like, you know, talk about, but I'll save those all for separate videos. Also, what would you like to be the plots, the characters, the stories, everything you would want to see in all these prequels and all these extended universes for all of our favorite horror movie franchises now going to the little screen as TV series? And yeah, what are your thoughts? As per usual, all sources will be linked down below in the description. Thanks for watching it. Peace, my amigos, and peace out.